Hey, it's Joel. I, I have this amazing machine right next to me here. It's, it's the FunMed HT from Intamsis. It's this behemoth of a machine. It weighs like a million pounds and it can do things other 3D printers can't. And it's at a price that actually is insane. And I'm gonna tell you all about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Welcome back. Uh, this is the FunMed HT from Intamsys. Uh, I've been working with the fine folks at Vision Miner for a long, long time. In fact, Rob at Vision Miner and I, we went to the same high school. It's kind of weird. So the people at Vision Miner talked to Intamsys and I got to borrow this machine for some amount of time. It is a crazy machine because it can do what a lot of other machines can't or what a lot of other machines that are higher priced can, and I'll explain that in just a little bit. As far as specs go on the machine, it's uh, it's essentially 260 millimeters by 260 millimeters by 260 millimeters. Uh, it's got auto bed leveling or assisted bed leveling, which which helps on a larger build plate. The build plate is borosilicate glass, and we'll talk about that in just a second as well. It's got its own slicer, and it looks like it's based off Cura. And in the in the machine settings, it's set for Ultimaker 2 G code. So so there you go. Uh, it's got a touch screen up here, but this is a knob that actually selects things. The SD card goes in right here. It's got three access doors. There's this front one that opens like this. There's this top one that opens like this. And then the side one right here is where filament goes. And there is a filament sensor that it passes through as it brings it over to the direct drive system. And it looks this way because it's not a typically enclosed 3D printer. You would classify this as an oven. And that's because while you can print PLA, ABS, PETG, what are considered low temp materials, this has the ability to bring the extruder to 450 degrees Celsius, which I think is the temperature of the sun. It's so hot! The build plate itself will go to 160 degrees Celsius, which is insane as well. And right there, that is a heater and that's a thermistor. And it will heat the chamber to 90 degrees Celsius as well. That is cool because that brings me to one of my points about this machine. You can print whatever you want on it. ABS, PETG, PLA, sure. But what about, what about PEAK or PEI, or, you know, Ultim, or PPSU, or any of those engineering grade materials that require the higher temperature this machine can do. I actually have a Joelbot in here right now. I was printing with some 3DX Tech ASA. They give you these oven mitts to take the build plates out because, well, it's hot. <laughs> let's, let's just say you did print something that was 160 degrees Celsius on the build plate. I mean, you wouldn't want to touch that with your bare hands. That, that could boil water. That could, that could cook cupcakes, Sean. It could. We should do that. We should do that. <laughs> Here's what's great about having a machine that's essentially an oven with a high temperature nozzle. This is ASA. ASA is, uh, it's similar to ABS, but it's got better UV resistance. Normally you wouldn't print ABS or ASA or worry about uh, overhangs because you wouldn't want to do them. It's not a, it's not one of those easy to use materials, but uh, this machine handles it fairly well. Let's get this off the build plate. Let's get this off the build plate and then uh, we'll talk about what happened right here and we'll go talk about the models. The way this works, you do need to remove things from the build plate while it's still hot and that's because if a model cools down on the build plate, it adheres to the plate pretty well and that's how you get gouges taken out of the build plate. Okay, I'm getting under the brim. There you are, pretty good. Oh yeah, one of the models uh, was uh, Chaos Cortec Godzilla and uh, I essentially just had to just pound at it with a hammer. You became the new king of the monsters that's, with that one. That's right, I did. Later. Don't break it. I'm... <sighs> oh, <laughs> that was satisfying. Oh, Here's our ASA Joelbot. Look at him. Look at him. Cool. Why don't we head upstairs, take a look at this model, some of the other things we've printed on this machine. Let's go. Well, you know, with that machine able to get up to, with an extruder at 450 degrees Celsius and a bed 
at 160 degrees C, it would make sense to uh, keep that in the house during the winter months so I could warm up the house. But here is the Joelbot printed in 3DX Tech ASA. What's interesting with their slicer, I couldn't find anywhere to adjust the temperature and I, th I looked like three times. So I don't think I was missing it. So what I did is I just used the ABS preset. I know that on the machine, I can adjust temperatures of things through the little touch screen or using the little wheel. I just didn't do that. ASA and ABS are close enough where I thought uh, the settings would be good enough just to see if I could print with it. And it was, and I did. So here is the Joelbot in ASA. This is a tough model in certain spots because of overhangs and whatnot. And if you look right under Joelbot's chin, right there, right there, it is not exemplary, but I, Oops, sorry, Joelbot. I didn't set the machine specific for ASA and I didn't do any test prints to verify my settings were correct. I just used the ABS settings and this is what we got, which isn't too bad because all things considered, that's what I used for this model right here. Wow. So this model, he won't even stand up on his own, Sean. Look at that. He just falls over. Too much rum. Well, it's like I, a real Joel. I lied. I lied. This is, uh, this is a model that's been going around a little bit and I don't remember who it's by, but I will put a link in the description because after the video, I'll go to my computer and I'll put that link in there. Here is, uh, it's, it's an amazing cube of sorts. Uh, I know uh, Chris Russell, Practical Printing, he was doing a, he printed this, I think, on his, um, his Prusa SL1. Oh. I think so in resin. It looked really good. But this is that 3DX Tech ASA as well, using ABS settings. And unlike the Joelbot, it didn't really have to bridge or do any crazy overhangs. So it worked out, well, it worked out fine. Uh, I, I think it looks, I think it looks good. There are some spots where there are some extrusion inconsistencies. But then again, if I look at this edge right here, this edge, this, this is an overhang edge and it looks Great. So for just setting it as ABS, I think the ASA did really well. And I bet I could fine tune this to be uh, an incredible ASA printing machine. Let's move over to ABS though. In fact, we're gonna go to this model. This was the very first model I printed on the machine. And this was printed in the ABS provided by Intamsys. And it's gloriously perfect. I, 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 don't, even, I don't even understand how, how this is capable. Uh, it looks perfect. And I don't print a lot of ABS because it's not the easiest material to print and there are far better materials to print. But then again, when you can make ABS look like that, just using default settings, it's impressive. And I bet if I built an impeller around this, it would function. It's kind of, oh, I wonder, ready, ready? Cool. So I also did a Joelbot in ABS and the ABS settings for the Intamsys ABS did fare better than the ABS settings for the 3DX Tech ASA. That was a mouthful, my goodness. You got it though. And uh, it, it, did, it did better. It's not perfect again, but it did better. And this isn't an easy model to print by any means. And, and you can still see detail on the arms and the, the crazy propeller hair and it's the same brim around the feet. In fact, it was the same G-code. I just put it in the ASA and hit print. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I did this one though. Uh, I, did, I did this, so it's, it's a larger version of this. And uh, the ABS did okay. It did okay, but it didn't do as well as I thought it would do. And I don't know what happened. I don't know, does ABS get old or does, I don't think it's hygroscopic as much as other materials, so I don't think it absorbed anything. It's just printed at point two, and uh, there's there's a bunch of places where there were some extrusion inconsistencies, and I don't know if that's because the ABS was splitting or if it didn't extrude the filament correctly, but that it was after this model that I moved over to the ASA just to see if it was a problem with the machine or with the filament. The ASA was doing well, so I need to find some more ABS to, to put through the machine. If you have a reliable and awesome ABS manufacturer, let them know I'm looking for some ABS. Finally though, finally. Look at that. Roar. That, I mean, we did, a, we did a snack pack on this one. We did. We did. This is uh, the Chaos Cortec Godzilla and this is ABS. And it blows my mind how awesome this model looks because, look at it. Because look at it, look at it. This is default ABS settings in a slicer and then I use their ABS in the machine and then I just hit print. I just hit print and then it spit this out. It was tough to get off the build plate. Really tough to get off the build plate. But things of note though, I want you to, can you see that Sean right there? There's some fingers right there or claws or Godzilla hands or whatever. Sure. 
I was thinking that with ABS, I when these started to print layer by layer, they would fold in or uh, it, we would get a lot of inconsistencies, inconsistencies because the material would shrink in ways and it just wouldn't look good. But it, it, it's not that it looks good, it's perfect. And if you look at the spines on the back, they're perfect too. This is, this is a great model, but at the same time, the printer printed it perfect using default slicer settings and, and their material, but it's just, it's a testament to, to what this machine can do with ABS. I know it's from the poster, but it still looks like he's taking a Godzilla-sized poo. It does. I got a couple more things to show you. So this model is a bear trap, and uh, it's interesting because... It's not a metaphor, it's an actual bear trap. It's an actual literal bear trap. Uh, that is glass from the build plate. What I tried to do is let the model cool before removing it from the build plate, and I, I, that was a bad idea. So the reason that they recommend you remove the model from the build plate while the build plate is hot is because then the inside of the machine is warm, the build plate is hot, there, it's not cooling at an inconsistent rate. In fact, the machine keeps the build plate hot for a thousand, up to a thousand hours for, until you can come back and remove the model from it. I've only let it go for three. But that way you can print overnight and not have to worry about your model destroying your build plate. Uh, but yeah, so, so there it is. This- uh, Wasn't it also a combination of you putting too much of their slurry on there or whatever it was? Uh, Vision Miner did provide some of their, their nanopolymer adhesive, and I have put that on the build plate. Um, no. Okay. So I think borosilicate glass grabs onto this, this ABS filament and other filaments, I think, just really, really well. I know that the Vision Miner nanopolymer adhesive will aid in adhesion, and it probably means that it could, it can hold onto the glass harder, but, um, I've heard from others that the glass can break even without it. So gotcha. I, okay. I don't want to think that's that's a factor here. But yeah, that's that's glass from the build plate there. But it's still, I mean, these are all ABS pieces and they they printed amazingly well. Like there's there's overhangs. That's a circle. These are teeth from the bear trap. What was that uh, He-Man character? Lockjaw. There you go. Lockjaw. Wow. He had an interchangeable uh, hand. He-Man, I should have known. <laughs> Everything you see here, including this bear trap, everything you see here was printed with this. This is the Intempsys Normal Temperature Extruder for PLA, ABS, PC, Nylon, TPU, or Carbon Fiber uh, PA. This is it. This is, their, this is their normal extruder. So this is the one that'll go up to probably 300 degrees C. Uh, it's got a, that is a peak liner. Oh. Yeah. So it's not uh it's it's not a it's not a PTFE tube. It is a peak tube. It is a peak liner and peak can withstand way more temperature than uh PTFE. So that is the normal, as they call it, or the low temperature. It's weird to think that 300C is a a low temperature. Right. Low temperature. Yeah. This though, this is the high temperature extruder for peak and and Ultim or you know PEI. So the machine, if you want to do these high temperature engineering grade materials, you, uh, you, you do need to switch over to the high temp extruder. Uh, it also has a peak liner. Now this can print peak. How can it have a peak liner? It's because the peak liner stays on the cold side. It's within, oh. it's, it's within the heat sink and it just goes close. It goes to where the heat break uh, intersects with the heat sink. So that's why it's never exposed to temperatures that could actually melt it. This will go to 450 degrees C. What is that in Fahrenheit, Sean? Like a thousand. It's, it's, it's close enough to a thousand where I would be scared to touch AKA it. AKA the sun. AKA, that's right. It's the temperature of the sun. This is a really interesting machine. And the reason I say that is because it's priced incredibly competitively for what it can accomplish. It has a 260 millimeter cube build volume, which it's not the largest. We're not talking CR10 size, but it's still fairly large for what it is, especially considering that you can print peak, PEI, and all of these high temperature engineering grade materials. And the price of the machine is where it gets just silly. We were at rapid uh, in Detroit, how long ago? Like a month ago, two months ago? Like two months ago. And we saw all sorts of these machines that had larger build volumes, but they were tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for printing 
these, these engineering materials. And uh, this machine, the FunMat HT from Intamsys, is anywhere between $5,500 and $6,200 US, depending on where you get it from. Uh, I'll put a link to Matter Hackers, I'll put a link to Vision Miner, and I will put a link in the description to Intamsys themselves. It's really cool. And it, it's just a loner. I'm not keeping this machine, but while I have it, I really, I really want to print some cool stuff with it. I have Peak, I have PEI, I have PSU, which I guess can be autoclaved. I'm interested in knowing what you think I should print with it. Uh, I do have the normal temperature hot end in still, and it's loaded with ASA, and I've got a whole roll of it. So if you have some ASA prints you'd like to see, tell me about those down in the comments. If you have some cool ABS or know of people that make some cool ABS that I should try, let them know or leave that name down in the comments. Finally though, finally, when I put the high temperature hot end on and I can achieve 450 degrees C, what do you want to see printed? What do you want to see printed with the Peak or the PSU or the, I think I've got carbon fiber Peak. I, I think I have that too. So we have the ability to print nearly anything with this machine. I'm excited to try this machine. I know this isn't a machine for everyone because $6,000 is still astronomically high for most, if not everybody. But again, the Ultimaker S5 is 6,000. The Ray's 3D Pro 2 Plus is 6,000. Neither one of those can approach 450 degrees C on the hot end. So if you're looking for a machine that is built well, but can get as hot as the sun, this might be for you. And I'm looking forward to showing you more about it. Anything else, Sean? No. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this little video right here. I'm excited to show you what this machine is capable of. Uh, if you've made it this far, you're awesome. If you're not subscribed, consider it, and then ring that bell to be notified of when cool stuff is uploaded. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. Love you all, as always. High five.